One of the use cases for statistical stacking of multiple images is to emulate a long exposure look using many shorter exposures. I'll show you how to achieve this in Affinity Photo. I have a series of images here which I've pre-processed from raw files into TIFFs. Within Affinity Photo, I can go to File and New Stack, click Add, then navigate to these files and add them all to the file list. We have a particular option here to automatically align the images. This isn't necessary for this particular set of images since I shot them on a tripod, but if your own images were shot handheld, you can leave this option enabled. I'll disable it for now and click OK. Then Photo will load all of these images into a live stack group. We actually start to see a result immediately. I'll expand the live stack group, then I'll option click on Mac, alt click on Windows, over one of the image layers to isolate it. This is what just one image from the stack looks like. If I exit isolation mode, just by clicking onto the parent live stack group, we will see the composited result again. Affinity Photo is taking the values at each pixel location across this range of images and performing statistics on them. By default, it's doing this with a median operator, but I can click on this operator icon here and change it. Hovering over an operator previews its result. Mean, for example, produces a slightly smoother result than median. And so for the purpose of long exposure emulation, mean is objectively better. I can collapse the live stack group for now, and I may want to make some further edits to this image. For example, some of the foliage detail is a little dark, so I might add a brightness contrast adjustment and bring the brightness up. This makes the water significantly brighter, which I want to avoid. So I'll click on the cog icon here to access this layer's blend ranges, and I'll bring the highlight node of source layer ranges all the way down. This blends the brightness contrast adjustment out of the highlight detail whilst still allowing the darker detail to be brightened. I may also want to lend this image a more autumnal feel, which I can achieve with a selective color adjustment. I'll target yellows and bring the cyan slider down and the yellow slider up. Then I'll also move magenta up slightly. Looking at this, I may want to add some contrast into the scene. So I'll click on the Brightness Contrast Adjustment icon to bring the dialog back up. And I'll just move the contrast slider up, like so. Now, because the foliage also moves between images, the background detail has become somewhat blurred and indistinct. I may not want this effect. So a quick way to fix it is to take one image layer, such as the top one in the stack here, duplicate it using Command J on Mac, Control J on Windows, then drag it out of the live stack group so it is positioned just above. The long exposure effect will be lost temporarily, but now I can add a mask layer to this single image layer, select the paintbrush tool using B on the keyboard, and I'll create a large soft edged brush by using Command and Option on Mac. Control and Alt on Windows, then click dragging to the right to increase width, and click dragging up to decrease hardness. My active color is already set to black, so I'm ready to paint over these areas, which will subtract from the mask and reveal the long exposure water effect. A quick tip here is to Option click on Mac, Alt click on Windows, over the mask thumbnail to isolate it. Here I can clearly see which areas I've painted black, which means they will reveal the long exposure water on the live stack group beneath. I can tidy up the mask if required, then Option or Alt click on the thumbnail once again to exit isolation mode. I'll show you one final idea that involves using a different stacking operator, this time with a different set of images. So I'll close this document down, then go to File, New Stack, and this time I'll add the images from the Lumsdale folder. 
I shot these with a tripod as well, so I'll uncheck Automatically Align Images, then click OK to load them into a live stack group. Once again, we can already see an initial long exposure result because the stacking defaults to a median operator, but this time I'll change it to maximum. This blends through the brightest pixel values from the range of images, rendering a unique effect with the moving water. I could take this further and experiment with blending results from different operators. I'll change the operator to mean, then go to layer, merge visible, and this will produce a singular pixel layer containing the result of the mean blend. I'll double click and name this layer mean. Then I'll hide this layer temporarily, change the stacking operator to maximum, and use merge visible again. I'll double click and name this layer maximum. Now I'll show the mean layer again, and with the maximum layer selected, I'll reduce its opacity to 50%. This produces an average blend of the two layers. I could also experiment with the blend mode. Screen will work quite well, as it will brighten the overall composition without clipping highlight detail. Now I could go on to do some further editing. I might add an HSL adjustment with Command U on Mac, Control U on Windows, then target the yellow tones and reduce their luminosity slightly. Then I might just finish off with a brightness contrast adjustment, increasing both sliders slightly. And there we go. I hope you found this video useful and it has perhaps inspired you to try this technique yourself. Although cameras can offer in-camera long exposure stacking, shooting a burst of images and stacking during post-production can offer you more flexibility with the final result. Thank you for watching.